Hey everyone, welcome to E3 Aftermath, a little segment where the GameSpot editorial staff talks about some of the big topics that came out of E3 2011. I am joined by Ricardo Torres, editor in chief of GameSpot.com. Hello. And by Tom McShay, associate editor of GameSpot.com. Hello. So the the first topic we're going to talk about is the successor to the PSP, um, the PlayStation Vita. Sony finally gave us an official name at the show. They also surprisingly gave us some pricing details uh, for the Wi-Fi only version and the Wi-Fi and 3G version of the handheld system. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't really give us a specific release date um, uh, other than that it would come out late 2011 holiday or around the holiday time. Uh, my first question, though, is, Ricardo, have... Has Sony remedied all the problems that kind of were associated with the PSP? Are they are they changing things enough around to make their handheld system be a little bit more successful this time around? Yes, right now on paper it, t- it certainly looks that way. There's uh, a bunch of things you're doing right with the hardware. Um, two two analog sticks, big step forward, which is nice, uh, and a lot of the features that you can assume it's going to have are totally what we want. So. And great screen, good price, um, pretty much everything except um, full backwards compatibility with your old stuff, because there's no UMD drive, not that I wanted one, but some digital would be great. But other than that, it seems like they're they're getting it right, hopefully they're consistent about it. I would actually go in the opposite direction. I think the biggest problem with the PSP is that it tried to be a portable PlayStation, and most of its games were just cut from that cloth, and I don't know if people want that. Like, I don't know if people jump to that as much, and and most of the games we're seeing, most of the big games are still, like, it's the Uncharted mold. And I really think that they need more stuff like Sound Shapes, which looks really interesting, that's like, this is clearly a portable game that's built with this in mind. So, I'm I'm hoping they do get away from their problems they had before, but that I haven't completely shed that we want to just be a portable console mindset. So it sounds like that we might be sort of heading into a repeat of the Nintendo DS and original PSP battle with... Uh, the Vita and the 3DS, where we have this really technically advanced system in the Vita and something that's a little bit more technologically um, behind it in the form of the 3DS, even though it has sort of the advantage of 3D. I mean, are we going to have that same battle again? Is it going to happen all over again? It boils down to the content, which is what we saw last time, because in a lot of respects, the hardware is kind of immaterial if if you have like a, an engaging experience on it. And we saw that with the PSP, real good. Uh, on the Vita, you know, you have a mix. You have a, a, a mix of experiences that at least give me hope. I'm kind of glass half full on this one because you have the console type stuff, you've got sound shapes, and then you have what I think is kind of cool because I travel a lot and I take it with me. You have these titles that work across both. So it's no longer wasted time gaming portably because it, it your save is going to move with you. And... You also have these interesting, you know, games that may be possible via PlayStation Suite, where you could have some Android-type stuff that supports touchscreen and whatnot. So, the the potential on paper is for uh, a much more varied gaming experience that's gonna hopefully cast a broader net. And if we've got some non-gaming stuff like you know what we've seen on PSP now, which is like comic reader. So if if I have that, you know, if I have Maybe if it's powerful enough to do Hulu or Netflix or that. Again, for my specific needs as like a dude that goes around a lot and I like my portable device with me to do stuff, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm not sure if Nintendo is, is going to be able to repeat the success. A lot of the reason the DS really took off is because they introduced new IPs which were only possible on that system. Nintendogs and Brain Age um, really changed everything for them. And right now, uh, it seems like based on Reggie B's Amaze, most recent interview, he's, he's talking about how they're rectifying the problems by releasing Zelda and then Mario games are, are, are announced. There's, there's the cart and the platformer. Um, but I think people want more than that, especially the casual audience. So Nintendo's in a really tough place and Sony has a chance to unseat them, but I think they need more, you can only play this on a Vita type games to really lure people uh, not only away from the 3DS, but from their cell phones as well. So yeah, time will tell, but it's It's a lot more interesting than it was with the 3DS PSP, I think. So, Tom, over the past few weeks, you've been talking a little bit about the potential innovation of this system, sort of the features that, you know, aren't sort of out there in the open at the moment, but some things that could be taken advantage of by developers in the future. Do you want to do you want to share with the audience? Oh, my God. It seems like you can do anything with that, which which sounds like an exaggeration, but (laughs) it isn't. Um, 
That thing can actually do what the Wii U tablet does. It has the same functionality if you were to connect it to the PS3. So it's basically any game you can imagine right now with, with the games. It's got the touchscreen and it's got the, the microphone, it's got two analog sticks, it's got tilting, and basically anything you can imagine works on that. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what developers do if they can just go nuts. Um, I kind of expect them to have a strong like PSN type presence with a lot of $10 and, and under type games, because I think that's where you're really going to see the innovation and you're going to see why you need to own this system. And Ricardo, do you have any sort of closing thoughts on what Sony needs to do in the coming months, kind of the things that they need to do to sell people on this handheld, the people that might have owned a PSP and maybe they weren't so happy with it, or the people that were sort of cautious about buying a PSP? What does Sony need to do, basically, to make this thing successful out of the gate? It's consistency and quality. Those are, the, those are the two big things where they kind of wavered. They need to be consistent with the software output, and they need to, they need to have variety because there will be people that will be attracted to Avita for a bunch of different reasons. Some people will be some, you know, die-hard PSP fans that are happy to have a new model with new features. Other people will be attracted to it for the first time because of the cross-compatibility with PS3. Other people could get excited because it has the whole touchscreen stuff. So all that's great. Serving that audience is going to be tricky. Uh, but in the end, it's going to be about the game. So they need to have a steady flow of games, a good variety of games, and for, for people that are maybe on the fence and looking to use this device as more than just a dedicated gaming platform, they need to throw a bunch of the stuff that we've seen the PSP eventually get. You know, it'd be great to have the comic reader, like I said. The Sony Reader app seems like a no-brainer, because why not? You know, if people want to do it, they should let them. Netflix and Hulu, you know, Curiosity, you know has got to come baked on that thing for the people that want it. But just to offer as much flexibility as possible, and, and to allow people to use it how they want. I think the original PSP had a lot of issues with people, what you see with a lot of Apple products, where you kind of have to adjust your life around how this thing wants you to behave. Um, but in terms of throwing your music and your video on this thing, it needs to be, it needs to deliver on everything people wanted the PSP to be, but that it wasn't. So certainly the PlayStation Vita is an impressive piece of hardware, and you can learn more about it by checking out our coverage at GameSpot.com.